Hello, welcome to this uh, new video on uh, ABC networking. My name is uh, John Schaap and today we're going to have a look at uh, using uh, Airwave for configuration management of um, Aruba devices. Um, so first we're going to log in to, uh, to our Airwave server. Uh, and the first thing um, we need to check is um, in AMP setup device configuration you will see this parameter here use global Aruba configuration can be set to yes or no um, if you set that to yes uh, it means that there is a global configuration so that means that there's one configuration set for every device every Aruba device on the, on this airwave server I do not want that because I wanted to have it uh, per group so I leave this to uh, to no uh, and that's also the default setting so then you go to your groups and what you do here is uh, first we're going to create a new uh, group um, going to add Aruba controllers to this group so I'm going I'm to call it uh, Aruba controllers add uh, then uh, you can change some of the of the basic uh, settings of this group so set it to uh, Netherlands in my case and for the rest leave everything default and I'm also do show device settings for only devices in this group because otherwise it will show all kinds of settings for um, all kinds of other uh, um, uh, devices that you can manage with, uh, with this airwave server so this is a simpler setup. Save and apply. And then apply changes now. Okay, then it's time to add uh, our device. So uh, I'm going to add a um, Aruba 3200 uh, controller, uh, which already is properly configured. So it has a full configuration, working production environment configuration. And I'm going to add that to, uh, to Airwave uh, right now. So we go to device setup, add, add an Aruba device, click add, IP address of the device, uh, that's basically all you need, all these values, community strings, etc. Uh, are already predefined, um, so if you do, did not set that up properly uh, up to now, you need to uh, modify that here. In my case, that's all uh, done already. And then I'm going to add it to the correct group. So Aruba controllers. And you can do it to a uh, specific folder if you want to do that. So let's do it to home lab. Uh, and then very important, leave it in monitor only mode for now. So don't directly put it in manage read write mode. Leave it monitor only just to see uh, what's going to happen. Um, if it's in monitor only mode, it means that you cannot change the configuration on uh, on the controller uh, that can only be done if you move it to manage read write mode and that will be done later but for now to be on the safe side we want to add it in monitor only mode so click add and then apply changes and then the device will be added uh, to airwave and the configuration will be uh, automatically uh, imported so we now see that uh, the device is discovered uh, and you can uh, click on it, see a bit more about the device. We see that the configuration is already good, so it imported the existing configuration into Airwave uh, and that's in sync now. And um, if you go back to the or if you go to the to the manage page over here, that's where you will find some details about the device, like here on the settings, name, location, contact, etc. Uh, those are uh, details uh, that are pulled from the from the configuration on the controller. So uh, that means that if you uh, add a device like we just did, and you're going to change stuff in here. Uh, that will lead uh, to a mismatch between uh, what's on Airwave and 
uh, what's on the controller itself. So you will only have a clean, uh, good config if you import it like I just uh, just did. Uh, the configuration can be found under the group, and that's where you see controller config. So here you see all your AP groups, all your wise LAN profiles, security profiles, local configuration, everything is there. Uh, So what needs to be done now is um, go to the controller again, so go here, go to the manage page and that's where we can now change uh, from monitor only mode, so the management mode from monitor only to manage read write, like this. Save and apply. Apply changes now. So in the background, it's now uh, changing uh, uh, the mode from monitor mode to uh, to manage read write mode. It does do uh, some verification again. That's what you can see here. It's in progress right now. So it takes some time uh, because what it needs to do is uh, it needs to go uh, log into the controller, do a show running config, and then compare that running config with the config that is stored in uh, in Airwave. So if you're gonna refresh it, and it's still in progress, so we have to wait a little bit longer. So this can take, uh, th this can easily take up, what, uh, up to one minute before it uh, completes. Now it goes to verifying, and then in the end it uh, should uh, Go to good. Like here. So now the config configuration is uh, uh, is good. Uh, and uh, this means that from now on, uh, if you do not want to uh, see any mismatches here, uh, that you only change configuration from uh, Airwave and not from the command line interface of the controller or uh, from the web user interface of the controller. So if I, for example, now go to that controller, just to show you what uh, will happen then. So I'm going to log in directly to the controller. And then go to the configuration and change something, for example, uh, add an SSID profile. Test, add. Go to that profile. And add a preset key. Hit apply and then go back to Airwave, go to the audit page and manually click audit. So what it uh, will do now is uh, it will go to the controller again, uh, ask for a show running config and compares it to what uh, is on Airwave. And that should lead to a mismatch right now because you just saw me uh, changing something on the controller outside of airwave uh, so that definitely should lead to a, to a mismatch and you see now configuration mismatched and then here it shows you what is wrong so it says an SSID profile with the name test is present on the controller and the desired configuration according to Airwave is that it should be not there. So it wants to delete it. Um, by the way, if you want to see the whole config of, uh, of what it is comparing, uh, you can click this here. 
and it shows you the complete configuration, uh, the show running configuration of the of the controller. And only if something is wrong, it will uh, show it in here. So it's a long list of uh, all the details uh, that you can have. So let's go back. And set it to only mismatch. Other interesting thing that you can see here is, by the way, this uh, view telnet SSH command log. So that's where you really see what's happening. Logging in, issuing no paging command, uh, looking at the guest uh, database, uh, but also the show running config. So it's the complete config. So you can see exactly what it, uh, how it communicates with, uh, with the controller and uh, how it pulls in the uh, configuration. So that's very good for troubleshooting if something is wrong. Uh, have a look at Telnet uh, SSH command log. So in the monitor uh, page of, uh, of the controller you will uh, now see uh, that configuration on one of the more devices uh, in this group has failed. Click repair to reapply uh, to those devices. So if you click repair, what it will do in the background, uh, it will go to the controller again and pushes the config uh, uh, that, uh, that is on airwave uh, back to the controller. So it will basically remove that extra SSID profile that we just uh, configured. So configuration is uh, back into good state again. So uh, uh, what I just showed you is that, uh, as I said, uh, you should never change uh, configuration in the command line interface or um, the web user interface of the controller itself. All that now needs to be done from uh, from Airwave. So, if you want to change something on the on the, on the controller config, you go to group, select the right group, click controller config, and then if you want to add something like um, a new radio profile. Just click add, give it a name, change the things that you need to change here. Add the profile and then hit save and apply. So it will then tell you what it's going to change. So it will create a, a radio profile called test with all these parameters here. Click apply change now. And in the background, that config is now pushed to the controller. Uh, and in that way, uh, this will not lead to, uh, to a mismatch because now the configuration on the airwave and on the controller is exactly the same. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe or leave a comment below um, if you like this, uh, these videos. Thank you very much. Until the next one.